live from Sin City, it's the Socks and Pinstripes Podcast. And now, here's the star of the show, Diet Dr. Griffin! This is Diet Dr. Griffin back with another episode of the Socks and Pinstripes Podcast. Post Thanksgiving edition. Hope everybody had a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, I know our, um, I know I did, and I'm sure uh, Shane did. did. Did you, Shane, have a good happy Thanksgiving? I had a fantastic Thanksgiving. I even did a 5K turkey trot on Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh, how, how how did you do time lo- time wise? I had negative splits for all three miles. Let's go. I think uh, so. I'm looking at my thing right now and. I did uh, eight minute miles for the average was eight minute miles for for three point four four miles. So that's good. Um, I'm I'm a very slow runner. It it doesn't doesn't seem that way if you look at the time that I did on my um my obstacle course race last weekend. Yeah, because uh, I did that in about two hours and fifty five minutes. Oh, geez, yeah. Yeah. And that ended up being um, in the top 6% of people who did that race. Oh, nice, dude. But I felt like it was it was so much flat terrain. I felt like I was going super slow because I'm just a, a slow runner. But I basically just I was like the tortoise. I just kept running, but I just never really ran fast. I just didn't stop at all. Yeah. That's kind of the difference. But there were obstacle courses, obstacles, too. It wasn't like I was just running straight you know, yeah. miles like you were. Yeah, we. Uh, so I did it with my brother and my dad. And my brother and I ran together, and then we ran back to get my dad. But my brother and I, we did one mile at 9, second mile at 8.30, third mile at 8, and then I sprinted to the last point four. So. Yeah. Well, that's good. At least you you got a bit of a, a workout in before, um, before a turkey. And uh, what kind yeah. of stuff did you guys have at, at the household? Uh, we actually did a uh, prime rib this year, smoked prime rib, which was I'd never had. Uh, I've, no, I've had prime rib before, but not for Thanksgiving. So my mom and dad, they have a Traeger. So we cooked it for like two hours and it was awesome. How about you? <laughs> uh, I went over I went over to Taylor's house. Uh, thank you, Taylor, for having me over. And we had um, a... I think there was some prime rib there as well. Uh, we we had a, a Cajun themed turkey, which apparently was the same turkey we had last year, but um, the way that it was cooked this year really brought out the the pop in, in okay. the, the turkey. So I wasn't expecting it, but it was it was good. <laughs> I'm a bit of a weenie when it comes to. Uh, spices but I've, I've gotten better over the years you're never going to get me doing like one of those one chip challenges or, or, or put like super hot sauce on stuff but i mean i like spicy food but i would never do that either that just seems not fun so <laughs> yeah I, i'm i'm in the um the medium range if, 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 on the uh, whole buffalo wild wings level of spice i i, I comfortably go medium Okay, yeah, that's not, that's not mild, but I want to taste my food, but I, I don't mind a little kick. Yeah, my mom also makes like this amazing apple cream uh, pie too, so we had some of that for dessert. There are some, there are some great desserts. Uh, one of my signature dishes, the thing that I bring to Thanksgiving, is I make an ice cream pie. And, Ew, what kind of ice cream pie? Um, I. That's one of the fun parts is I I vary it up every year. Okay. Usually I will try to have a black raspberry. It's kind of my signature. Oh, so like a black forest sort of vibe. But now well a little bit. It's not like a it's black raspberry specifically has its own little flavor and kick to it, but um the the dark side conversion was complete because I did a uh, baby Ruth bar <laughs> flavored yeah. ice cream on the bottom. <laughs> Okay, it was well, also it like, like a dollar. Looks 50. like I'll have to root for the Boston Red Sox for you now. So. It was also a dollar <laughs> fifty at the grocery store, and inflation made this thing like way more expensive than 
I remember it being in the past. So <laughs> I was like trying to do this as cheaply as possible. And I just feel like I failed miserably. Well, but, since Benedict Arnold, your team, that's probably another reason why I was so expensive. So <laughs> no, the ice cream was like actually the cheapest part of it. <laughs> but they used the um when COVID um hit, like they canceled um well, they discontinued, I should say, the crust that I use. I used to use the Oreo, you know, pre made pie crust. Oh, okay. I don't have that anymore. Oh, so I've been I using think the... that would be pretty popular, but I know, right? I mean, yeah. yeah, but for some reason they just they got rid of it after COVID, and they did they just discontinued it. I I looked it up, yeah, and... <laughs> just to make sure. But yeah, like they did yeah. away with uh they did away with Starbucks uh coffee, the like frappuccinos or whatever you could buy at the grocery store for like mm -hmm. two years, and now they're back again, just randomly. So. Yeah, I, I don't know why they the Oreo those I can't imagine those weren't popular. Yeah, right. Yeah, so I end up using a pretzel ones instead, and I put yeah, and the most expensive part was actually the candy bars. Yeah, that makes sense. But I put like six candy bars in this thing, a varying. Oh, what kind of candy bars? Uh, Heath bar because I just want to because uh, it's make, the best I one. Make Jeff yeah, feel miserable. Good. Exactly. <laughs> and um, my other signature is um, Oreo, uh, the cookies and cream with the white chocolate. Okay, white chocolate. All right, that's interesting. Yeah, the, that that mixed with the Heath works very well. And there's like a, a lot of fudge in it, too. Okay. All right. Fudge in there. So, yeah, it, it is decadent. And I saved some room in my stomach for, um, for that because I knew I was going to have a bunch. Of that. Yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> and the best part is you get to leave it at 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 the house. So you don't ever have to worry about, you know, grabbing it out of the freezer and after midnight <laughs> or the cat always, getting into it. I always leave what I bring, but I take the can of whipped cream home for whipped cream shots later. So. <laughs> nah, I don't I don't like whipped cream, so you can have that. <laughs> well, that makes one of us. So. <laughs> yeah. We have had some interesting baseball events, and it seems like everything right now is very L.A. centric. Yeah, because Classic hogs. Yeah, it went and the Angels they struck again. They signed Yusei Kikuchi to a three-year, sixty-three million dollar deal. Jeez. To which I say, go get your money, Yusei, because <laughs> that was a lot of money. I, I remember you were. I don't know if you mentioned this on the show a week or two ago, or you mentioned just the me and texting, but you said that the Astros, right? The Astros were looking at keeping him. Yeah. Passin, there was a rumor that Passin said that the Astros were looking at uh, holding on to him, but apparently he went to where the money was. <laughs> I, I thought you said three years, 51 when you um, talked about that. So to get yeah, $12 like million dollars over three years, I mean, that's, yeah. I can't blame the guy. Yeah, right. So, and we another. Um, he's a Boris client, of course. You go where the money is. Yeah, but we had another Boris client sign this week, and surprisingly, <laughs> was Blake Snell. Yes, I cannot believe that the Dodgers are still throwing money around. Yes, the Dodgers. So. Yes, the Do We should say the Dodgers are the ones that did this, and yeah. they they have um done some uh, creative accounting in recent weeks <laughs> when it comes to this because they gave uh, they gave Snell a $52 million signing bonus mm -hmm. and then $65 million is going to be deferred. Yeah, I, now, I had a $62 million, but yes, yeah, something like that. So. I think it goes 50, 52, uh, yeah, $52 million up front and then $65 million deferred, but it yeah, still I mean, these these contracts and this this thing came out on Tuesday and we're recording yeah. on Friday. So obviously with Thanksgiving week, like, you know, the full breakdowns of how this thing is gonna be, you know, deferred isn't just gonna come out like in a couple of days. They're gonna take their time and you know yeah. it really matter. Yeah. On that, but you know so I have I have all the numbers on this. So okay. starting from because I mean I just feel like you can't talk about how much deferred money the Dodgers have yeah. without just going through all the numbers of the deferred money just for it to be out there in the air. So obviously Shohei Otani, 700 million 
680 deferred, 97.1% of his contract. Will Smith, 50 million deferred. That's 35.7%. Yeah. Freddie Freeman, 57 million deferred. Blake Snail, 65. Uh, Mookie Betts, 115 for a grand total of nine. Are you not, are you not counting Teoscar Hernandez? No, not, it's like eight, eight million. Eight million dollars is chump change. So. Did you say Freddie had <laughs> deferred money too? Because I thought Freddie had deferred in his deal as well. Yeah, I did say Freddie. Okay. Freddie's at fifty-seven okay. million. Yeah. Okay. Mookie Betts deferred a hundred and fifteen million for a grand total of nine hundred and sixty-seven million. So almost a billion dollars in deferred money that they'll have to start paying in twenty twenty-eight to Freeman, and it ends with Betts in twenty forty-four. And that's not even including the other guy who just signed a deal today, too, Tommy Edmond, who has some deferred money in his deal, too. He signed a five-year, $74 million extension today. Do you know how much he deferred? Uh, no, I mean, this this deal literally came out like a couple hours ago. I don't think oh, that, okay, yeah. that part has <laughs> yeah. been... So they're really just trying to get to that billion dollar mark, I, I feel. So. The thing is, is that the Dodgers have exploited a loophole in the system right now because yeah. you can defer money an unlimited amount of money in um according to the players union uh, according sorry according to the cba this was something that the players union wanted because they believed that with deferred money that it would allow more guys to get signed to deals which at least in the case of the dodgers it's certainly proving to be true yeah yeah but the problem is, is that the rest of baseball outside of, you know, some some or some of the larger markets like the Red Sox have done some deferred deals, as have the Mets and the Nationals yeah. had tried to do deferred deals with um, Bryce Harper and Juan Soto when they were approaching them for uh, contracts. And obviously they did a deferred money deal with uh, Max Scherzer when he signed there. Yeah, many years ago, but most of the teams are just not doing deferred money, at least certainly not to the levels that the Dodgers have done. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's astronomical. It's like I don't. So beginning in 2033 is when is when the chunk of all the contracts, all the deferred money starts becoming due, you know, every year. Yeah. So basically, I guess they've decided that they just want to roll out their farm players for a decade from 33 to 44. So yeah, I don't think they're, I don't think they're going to do that. Yeah. They have um, a massive, massive uh, contract with Comcast on uh, their RSN. Of course they do. Yeah. And, and by that time they will, likely uh, and they as an MLB will likely begin to roll out uh, larger term uh, TV deals. They're trying yeah. right now to consolidate and get all of the rights back. Uh, in recent weeks, there's been you know news about how uh, diamond sports group has agreed to deals, you know, agreed to deals with MLB teams, but they're all like short term in nature. Yeah. And MLB is trying to, you know, roll up as many of these things as possible, many of these teams, you know, streaming rights as possible so that they can sell a package to a uh, major broadcasting firm, the TNTs, the ABCs, NBC, CBS, those sort of larger companies to nationally broadcast the games. Because that's yeah. what the NBA and the NFL do. And the yeah, NBA yeah. basically tripled their um, rights fees on their last set of negotiations that uh, came through within the last three, four months. Yeah. Tripled the rights. Yeah, that's, fees. Getting, that's crazy. Getting billions <laughs> of dollars. And they have three different levels. And, and Amazon is getting got one of the levels. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, uh, package. So MLB is trying to follow that suit. And in order for them to do that, they need to bundle up as many of the rights as possible. And then by the time 
that the Dodgers have to start paying out all this stuff, they're likely expecting more national um, contracts to you know pay out and divvy things out across the board to the teams. And the other yeah. thing is, is that the Dodgers are owned by a you know sixty billion dollar hedge fund. So yeah. what, what's yeah. what's one billion dollars over like ten years? You know in fees for them they make so much friggin money on luxury them. tax what's the luxury tax we are the luxury tax <laughs> well that that's the thing is that deferred deferred money doesn't count against the luxury tax yeah. Yeah. and the deferred money in the signing bonuses actually lowers the year-to-year hits on yeah. the luxury tax i mean otani's only counting for 46 million dollars on the luxury tax yeah, this is the full seven hundred that he, you know, full seventy per year that he really should be. Yeah, yeah, because of the funny math that they do with the present value of contracts. Yeah, I mean, if they're bringing the Edmund back, you got to think that probably Tay Oscar is next. That's possible. I, I I don't know. They may not need to bring Tay Oscar back. I mean, they may not need. Yeah, that's true. He might be in one of those situations where, in order to get the max amount of money he might have to go somewhere else, even though he wants to stay in LA. So, I I mean, it, it's, it's, it's hard to say the Dodgers can do whatever they want to do. Yeah. And Keep Tay Tay in LA. Cause I, I love to see, I'd love to see him continue to play great. seems like he I love to see him play great. Weather, so. I love to see him play great too. I just get a feeling that some other team is going to just pony up a bit more money for him. Yeah, I hope it's uh, like San Diego or like one of the rivals. <laughs> but if you're one of the rivals, though, would you even want it? Would you even just try to spend the money right now? Or would you just pack it in and be like, uh, yeah, I what, mean, what chances do you, the diet? What chances do some of these teams actually have right now? Of but if you think about it, like uh, maybe you could try to get the Dodgers into a Mets situation like they were last year, where they spent all the money but then went nowhere. So Dodgers though are, are, are way too smart and way too talented. Yeah, I mean, I agree. With, I agree Mets with traps. you. So, yeah, we'll we'll see. So <laughs> I haven't heard any grumblings about any of the major free agents. Besides that, it's just one of those things where you kind of have to wait, wait, yeah. see. Another yeah. interesting story that's kind of come out is that Shohei Otani is trying to get some of his baseball cards back from eBay. Yeah, and this is kind of weird. The, this is what I don't understand: is he wants to regain? So it's like three hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars worth of trading cards. It's supposed to be like his wants- own cards too, like stuff that he signed. Yeah, but for like from my understanding, the way that it made it sound in the article that I read anyway was that the cards were bought from like eBay and other places like that with his money that was being siphoned by his interpreter. So his interpreter buys the card, I guess has him sign them and then resells them, but they were never Otani's cards to begin with. So essentially he's trying to buy back his signature on cards. Like I, I'm just like not sure how that's going to go for him because it's not the cards themselves that were stolen. It was essentially like he signed a bunch of cards and then his interpreter sold them, but then it was his own money, but they were his interpreter's cards. I don't know. This sounds a like very, a very thing. strange situation. Yeah. Why would he? Why good would he? Luck to him, but it seems like he has enough money already. I, I... Yeah, it, it's it's interesting. He must be trying to get his own merchandise back, thinking that it's got some inherent value. Now that Otani is like trying to be the greatest player in the history of baseball. Yeah. No. Well, yeah. We'll see how it goes next year when he starts pitching again. But like, even the Dodgers minor leaguer. Make, made the news by testing positive for, you know, PEDs. Like, yeah. the, everybody, every bit of news right now is Dodgers and Angels related. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Angels are determined not to be last, and the Dodgers are determined to run it back. So, <laughs> Yeah, they are, they are trying to run it back for the next five years. <laughs> They're yeah. not just running it back this year. 
Yeah, it should be fun to watch that dynasty unfold because there's a lot of great baseball players on there. And Kim, can you imagine if they go out and get like quality starting pitching? <laughs> That's just be insane. So. Well, it's going to be interesting to see if they decide to run the six man rotation next year because the Angels ran a six man rotation with um, Otani when he was pitching in in the at Anaheim. Yeah, and I get the feeling that probably one of the appeals of Yamamoto would be, you know, we're going to go six man when Otani's back. Yeah, I think so too. And they seem to just have a lot of injury prone pitchers with the Dodgers too. Yeah, Glass now yeah. might as well have two S's in his name and say <laughs> Glass now because yeah. he always gets hurt every year. Yeah. And yeah. you know, Snell missed a ten starts this year too. Yeah, but he's that always had some injury good. issues. Yeah. Oh, yeah. With the injuries, yeah. Now, granted, Snell Snell had groin issues, and you can argue some of that was likely due to him coming in late and trying to get up to speed. Yeah. Similar to Montgomery having his injury and just you know, futility at, at on pitching. Yeah, I really I really hope he has a bounce back year. I know I keep saying that, but I really do hope he has a bounce back year this year. Well he's so. got certainly got a shot at it. He's you know lined himself up where he doesn't have to go through free the free agency rigmarole. Yeah. <laughs> And I think I think we're going to see more of the Dodgers trying to defer money on their deals and finagle things like they did because Snell is a Washington state resident. Mm -hmm. And of course, you get paid fifty two million dollars up front. That's likely not going to have to be paid under California state income tax. Yeah. And when you're done playing snell will likely get the 65 million dollars under washington state income tax rules which i don't think you guys have income tax there is that correct uh so income federal tax? but uh but for state we just hit skip <laughs> That's, yeah same same thing with us uh same thing with us here in nevada no, okay cool no yeah. state yeah. income tax so that's, oh, it's so fun when you're doing your taxes and you're just like, oh, I'll just skip this section. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. It also saves you money because you can, a lot of the tax programs, you got to pay for the state uh, filings and you don't have yeah, state exactly. filings. So you just, you just yeah. do a sales tax calculation um, number instead. Get a little nerdy up in here. Exactly. Exactly. Which, if you don't know, look it up, listeners. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Otani's already established that he's, you know, going to live in Hawaii when he's done playing. So he'll be he'll be retired and getting all of his uh, six hundred eighty million dollars in in Hawaii. And and while I haven't looked up Hawaii's uh, taxes, I'm sure there is probably some state income tax there. It's certainly not going to be the level of California. Yeah, nothing's the level of California these days. So. No, no. <laughs> they just increased the gas tax to a bajillion dollars, so that should be interesting to see how that works out. So, yeah. And speaking of players that are um, hanging it up, Brandon Crawford of formerly of the San Francisco Giants, and I believe most recently with the Cardinals, is hanging it up. Mm. Uh, multiple time world champion with the Giants, supposedly an all-around decent human being, just kind of called it a day. Hey, yeah, I mean, it seemed like uh, he was kind of becoming, he was on his road to being one of those guys who's just a journeyman on different teams. I think it's just smart to know when you're probably not ever going to get that big contract again, and how many times do you want to move before, you know, do you want to quit or do you want to wait till no one wants you? So. Yeah, because usually you'll see um, all of these players, you know, in the middle of the season, you'll see that, oh, this player is retired, and it's, it's retired because nobody wants to pay you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If nobody wants you, that's why you're retired. And sometimes you get told at 40, and sometimes you get told at 21 that your time is coming, but your your time is coming. Or you get told at 38 that you're being traded to the Mariners to have your worst season ever, and then you get retired. So. 
<laughs> well, Brandon Crawford would have been uh, 38 going into next year. I mean, he's a prime candidate to be on the Mariners. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we, we hey, should. Hey Jerry, do you want a player who can't play anymore? <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys. No do offense a... to Brandon Crawford, but <laughs> you guys do need a couple of infielders now. I'm just saying it's right up his alley. So. <laughs> Roas non-tendered and um, Polanco not getting his um, option picked up. I can't wait for them to have to like sell the farm in order to get a bunch of just average players and then renew Jerry's contract for literally no reason, blah, 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 blah. So whatever. No, they're going to probably trade some of their pitching. I know they um, keep saying they're not going to, but they got it. They're going to have to, if they want to trade because they're not going to pony up the money. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, it'll be, yeah. It'll be fun to watch. That's yeah. That will be interesting. Yeah. So. We'll, we'll keep it. We'll keep an eye on, um, on them. But do you have any uh, closing remarks today? We're going to let you go because you got to go uh, hang out with your family. Oh, yeah. So I went and did the research. If you remember from last week when I said the uh, Chicago chapter of the BBWAA yeah. had, had started the Rookie of the Year in from 1940 to 1946. Mm-hmm. Uh, so before it was known as the Jackie Robinson Award, it was known as the J. Lewis uh, Kaminsky Award for the ah. White Sox owner of the thirties. And so here we go. The winners from 1940 to 1946 as chosen by the BBWAA Chicago chapter, uh, in 1940, yeah. uh, in 1940, uh, Lou Boudreau, uh, shortstop for the Cleveland Indians of the AL was rookie of the year. Uh, 1940, 19- 1941, Pete Reiser of the Brooklyn Dodgers, NL. He was an outfielder. Um, 1942, it was Johnny Beasley, a uh, National League St. Louis Cardinals pitcher. Cool. Uh, 1943, Billy Johnson of the New York Yankees, um, third baseman in the American League. Mm-hmm. Uh, 1944, Bill Voisel, uh National League New York Giants uh, pitcher. Uh, 1945, Dave Ferris, uh, Boston Red Sox pitcher. Let's go. Uh, 1946, Eddie uh, Waitkiss, uh, Chicago Cubs, uh, first baseman. All right. And those are your winners from 1940 to 1946. Kidoki. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I hope everybody had a happy Thanksgiving again. And we'll be back next week with hopefully some more free agent news. And if not, we'll figure out something else to talk to you guys about. I'll say, I'll just yell, don't touch my Mariners garbage. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we'll we'll explore Mariners trades and Red Sox trades. and, and, And how do we get Griffin to be a full on Yankees fan? Exactly. How do we get you there, Griffin? So. <laughs> well, you know, Juan Soto staying with the Yankees would help because Juan Soto is my second favorite player in all of baseball. Okay. Yeah. See, so you're already halfway there. So. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, see you guys later. Yeah. Right, bye now.